is December 12th, so that means today is time for the 12th day in my Countdown to Christmas video series. So we've already had a bunch of these so far, but actually the project type that I'm going to be doing today is different than anything I've done on my channel. Also, I'm not particularly good at this, but I wouldn't say I'm bad at it either. Like, I'm more one of those people who I've never quite pursued developing that skill, but when I've messed around with it a little bit, I've been okay at it. So, today we're going to be doing a little bit of origami. So, lots of fun, and fortunately, because I'm not so great at origami, if I'm able to do this project, it means you can definitely do this project too. So I really like it because it's very simple. You just do the same process over and over, just the trick is you change the size of paper you use. And we're going to be making origami Christmas trees. Now, a quick word. This green one I made a few years ago when I first discovered the origami instructions for how to do this, and I thought it was super cool. But then as I was thinking through what videos I should do for my series, I was like, you know what, this would be a good one to do. And I thought, I was like positive that we had more paper. But this piece of construction paper right here is literally the only green piece of paper we have in the entire house. We have a huge stack of construction paper and there's literally only one piece of green construction paper. And construction paper isn't even the right type of paper for doing origami to start with. So, since it's my finals week right now, I'm trying to get this filmed. I don't want to throw anything extra in like running to the store for green paper. So, all that to say, I thought we had some colored printer paper like this that was green, which is similar to what I use for this tree. But turns out we don't. I have this single sheet of green construction paper and lots of this nice, this beige colored printer paper. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stare at this piece of green paper and use your imagination. And now, whenever you see this color, you're going to imagine it's green, okay? So let's practice. See this color? Imagine it's actually this color, okay? You guys got that? You can candle that? So obviously we're going to need some paper. Now what is cool about this project is because it's kind of a modular project and you just do the same process with different size pieces of paper, you can make yours as tall or as small or as big as you want just by changing how many pieces of paper you use and what the sizes of the papers are that you use. So as far as paper goes, since I don't have green paper, I'm going to be using just normal printer paper, but it's kind of this beige color so it'll be a little bit easier to see. And what you want to do is you want to start out by cutting out a bunch of different sized squares of this paper. So I'm going to be making a tree that's this size. So I'm going to need three for the top and then a fourth one for the trunk. So I started off at six inches and then I decreased each size of paper by three quarters inches. So this is six by six inches, five and a quarter by five and a quarter inches, four and a half by four and a half inches. And then for my tree trunk, I'm using a size of paper that is five inches by five inches. So you're going to want to start by cutting those out. What works really helpful is if you have a paper trimmer, something like this one by Fiskars. I love this thing. It helps make your edges a lot nicer. Also, it has the swivel arm, so it makes it really easy to measure so that way your papers can be accurate sizes. And the nice thing about origami is you don't need any tape, any glue. You don't have to attach it any fancy way. The way you make it stay together is just by folding paper. So it's really cool, really fun. And I promise that if I'm able to do this project with success, you should be able to too. It's really nice because just about every piece of this tree is folded the same way. So once I show you how to fold one piece, you'll know how to fold pretty much all of them. So let's start folding our paper. So I have my three pieces of paper for the top of the tree off to this side, and this is my piece of paper for the trunk. So I'm going to set this one off to the side because this one's folded just ever so slightly different. I'm going to start with my biggest square of paper, and to start off we want to fold it in half like this. And when you do origami, it is important that you make sure your edges are lined up pretty well so that way your folds are precise. But the nice thing about this project is there is a little bit of wiggle room. So now once I've got the edges lined up, I'm just going to crease along the side, make a nice sharp crease, and open it up. So as I was saying, you there's a little bit of wiggle room if your folds aren't perfect. And now I'm going to fold it in half, just like I did before, except in the opposite direction. So now I have it folded into quarters, kind of like that. So I'm opening it back up and flipping it over. 
And now I want to fold this piece so that way this corner goes all the way to the corner on the opposite side. Line it up and make my crease. Open it back up, rotate it, and do the same with these other two corners. Fold one towards the other. Again, I want to make sure I'm lining things up pretty accurately. It doesn't have to be perfect, as I said, but the more accurately you make your fold and the more crisp your folds are, the easier it will be to assemble. So now open it back up, and we're going to pop it back the other way. So when you do that last fold this way, it's going to be like this, but kind of pop it the other way. And when you do that, you might start to see these folds all kind of come in. So if I just pinch a fold right here, I can start pushing it downward. I can do the same there and push that edge in right there. So again, I'm just taking these edges and just folding them inward. And I can fold it in half from there. I'm going to lay this down, crease my edges here again just so they're nice and crisp for working. Again, here's another look at what I did. So it kind of looks like this now. And if your bottom is flat, it means that you folded it the other way. So unfold it and pop it down. But mine has the nice corners at the bottom, so if you have the corners at the bottom, you folded it correctly. Now I'm going to take just this top layer here, I don't want to catch these little guys, and I'm going to fold this top layer all the way up to the top. And then crease it. And then flip the whole thing over. Take just the top layer again, fold this corner all the way up to the top, and crease it. So now it looks about like this. So now remember, I've got these little flaps here that I can actually open back up. So I'm going to open these up like this and fold it in half this other way. So it was like this, we're folding it back like this. Again, pause to just make sure your creases are nice and crisp. And we're going to repeat just what we did on this side. Just fold these triangles up to the top. Flip it over. Fold the triangle up to the top. Also, I'm sure these folds all have technical names. I just don't actually know the names for them. So I'm just saying fold the triangle here and stuff using the layman's origami terms. So now I've got a piece that looks like this, where I can fold it back this way if I want, fold it this way. Kind of has this almost like a star or diamond shape. And this is exactly where I want to be because now we are getting very close to the end. So we've got these pieces of paper in here that we folded up. And what we want to do is we want to take this crease right here, just kind of pinch it out like this, and we want to fold it down so that way this crease goes into the crease right along there. So I'm just gonna gently hold it and press it down into there. And once it's pressed down, I'm going to tighten the center seam. And when you watch it on camera, it looks like, wow, how do you get it to lay so precisely? But when you do it in real life, it actually folds down really nicely. It kind of just goes where it needs to go. The same thing here. Grab this crease right here, just like this with my fingers, and kind of fold it down. Now you wanna make sure it goes nice to the center here. It's kind of puckering, so it helps if you go almost pull up or out on it a little bit as you lay it down into that side crease. And once it's lined up in there, I'm going to make a nice crease in the middle. You can also lay it down on the table and just press like that. That works pretty well also. I'm gonna go to the next side, do the same exact thing. Take it and fold the center crease to the right. I hope you guys can see it. That, and then crease the center. One last time. Again, if it's kind of puckering at the very center in there, you can kind of pull on it a little bit and kind of pop it and it will get and lined up better. So now I've got a piece that looks like this and we are so close to finishing our first piece. So what I want to do is take this whole thing and flip it over. Also, you notice I'm holding it with a finger inside each of these little folds here. This just kind of helps me keep a good grip on it. So now these are the flaps that we just made and we want to fold them instead of facing to the right, we want them to fold over to the left. I'm gonna go around, fold them all over to 
I guess, so they were all going in a counterclockwise direction. Now I want the folds to point in a clockwise direction. So last of all, to keep this to all stay together, we're gonna take these corners and we're going to tuck them in right in that little space there. I'll show you again. So I'm gonna take this corner and kind of open this up and just fold it right down into there. And I'll keep going around and doing this for each one. My third one here, just fold this corner right down in there. Now, the last one is notoriously hard. It's really important that you have nice sharp creases for things like this last one, just because it can be a little bit tricky. What I found helps is if I kind of open this up again for a minute, I can come right along here and pinch this edge here one last time, just to make sure that crease is really good. So that's just to help, a little tip to help you make it easier. But when I slide this in, because I can't really, I can't really hold this and pop it open like we've been doing. So what I want to do is I want to cur gently curl this tip over and stick it into that gap and then slowly feed it in there. This is the tricky part. So just use a little bit of patience, slowly work it down into that crease there. Sometimes this goes better for me, sometimes it's more of a struggle. Just play with it until you can get it to go all the way down in there. All right, and after a little bit of wrestling with the paper there, I was able to get that corner to go right in there. Took a little bit more work than the first three. I'm meeting up some of my creases. And there we go, this is the first piece of our tree. That is this piece right here because all these pieces slide apart. So I just made this piece and these other two pieces of paper, I'm going to fold the exact same way and they will be that piece and that piece. So we'll pretend I fold those off the side when really I'm just gonna use these ones I've already made. But now we still need to make the trunk of our tree. And that's where this five by five piece of paper comes in. So to start off, we're going to do the same process. We're going to fold it in half along from side to side, open it back up, rotate it and do that same fold just in a different direction. Then open it back up, flip it over, fold it in half from corner tip to corner tip. Open it back up, turn it, fold it in half from corner tip to corner tip. Open it back up, pop the top up, and fold it in and down like that. And then you can fold it so that way it makes this nice square diamond shape. So, so far everything's been the same as we did for the top tree pieces. But now to make this piece taller than the other ones, we're going to fold this corner right in here, this edge into the center edge. So I'm going to just fold right there. Now this is usually where I start to run into problems with this, just because if I don't do my initial folds neatly enough, I have a harder time when I tuck in the bottom on this one. So now with the left side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Fold that edge right into the center. Flip it over. And same thing on this one. I'm gonna fold the edges into that center crease. And now we're going to repeat pretty much the same last few steps as we did. And so what I mean by that is we're gonna now take this bottom corner, fold it up all the way, as far as it will go, crease it, flip it over, fold this bottom piece up all the way as far as it will go, crease it. Now we're gonna open it this way. Nice crease in there. Those new folds we just did. Fold the bottom triangle up, crease, flip it over, fold the bottom triangle up, and crease. Now we're gonna do that same little trick where we take this piece and fold it down right inside that seam. Then pinch in the middle. You might notice on mine that I had this little bit extra sticking out. That's because I didn't fold it very accurately at first, so I'll probably need to trim that off later on. Gonna turn it, do the same thing on this side, grab that middle crease, and fold it into the corner there. Pinch the middle, 
copy this all the way around. I'm folding that side in right there. And then creasing that fold in the middle. Last side. And right there. Now I'm gonna grab it like this and flip it over. And again, we have these little folds here. Right now they're all facing counterclockwise, so you wanna fold them over clockwise. And last of all, we want to tuck these pieces in just like we did before. So again, the first three, not so bad. Just tuck and fold it right there. Tuck the corner, tuck this little triangle into the left. Tuck the triangle into the left. And now we've hit that last one. You just gotta work a little harder at this one, but it's not impossible, you can get it. So just gently kind of fold it over and work it down into that pocket there. There we go, that one actually went pretty good. And there you go, that's how you make the base of the tree. So once you make all your pieces, the last thing to do is assemble. So if you look on the bottom, they all kind of have that X shape and it's open. So we're just gonna slide the tree trunk in there. Nestles right in, you can slide it in as far as you want, really short tree, or you can leave it taller. I'm gonna leave mine a little bit taller. Grab my next smallest piece, slide it in and take the top of my tree and slide it on. And there you go, now you've made an origami Christmas tree. And hopefully you were able to follow along and make your very own origami Christmas tree. So as always, if you have any questions, I know that origami can be a little overwhelming when you first start. So if you, again, if you have any questions or there's any parts in the video you're confused about, leave a comment below and I'll try to explain it in a different or new way that might help you understand more. But I think this project is really fun because it shows you that, you know, the average person can tackle origami. You know, you just keep repeating the same process over time. You can kind of get the feel for how to do those folds and things so it does get easier with practice. I'll also throw out another cool idea with this because it is a Christmas tree. If you make it so that way it has a total of six Christmas tree spots, you can almost see that you can pop these up a little bit taller or shorter, and you've almost got these little pockets in there. So if you wanted, you could put pieces of candy or something in there because there's 24 spots going around, and you can make it as like a mini advent calendar for yourself or for your kids or whoever you wanted to make it for. Which it's already, you know, December 12th, but hey, you could always start another advent calendar. They're always fun, right? But that's what I've got for today. Make sure you come back tomorrow because I've got a really fun, crazy, special project that you're not gonna wanna miss. I had a lot of fun filming that. So make sure you come back tomorrow for another great video. But until next time, I hope you continue to have a very Merry Christmas season and happy crafting. So another thing that I think is really fun about these trees is they can grow and shrink. So like, if I take this one apart, I can just set this one barely on top of here. It might slide down a little bit. So right now it's this nice giant tree, right? And then you can just go and that's like a cute little tree and I don't know why, but that really cracks me up. So hopefully you enjoy playing with your trees as much as I do.